Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Burka Kodash. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth risking their lives in these last days to push this truth. Shalom also to the few aquats who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Shar Allah from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do a quick one regarding the atrocities of the so-called white man, Cristobal Colon, in, um, in brackets. And hopefully it's going to be edifying. Before I start the lesson, I would like to play this video and out reports back. Christopher Columbus, one of the great European heroes, turns up on the island of Hispaniola. He was welcomed by the native people. They embraced them, they treated them with fantastic hospitality. His soldiers snatched babies from the breasts of their mothers and dashed their heads against the rocks. Children were fed alive to his dogs. Women's breasts were cut off. He decided to hang 13 of the Native Americans in Hispaniola to recreate the crucifixion of Jesus oh, plus the apostles. It's true that the majority of people died there of disease. Disease is introduced by the Europeans unwittingly, but many others were driven to death through overwork, direct murder, through starvation as their resources were taken away. Columbus insisted that everybody bring him a certain amount of gold and those who failed to do so had their hands cut off. Some were sent back to their villages with their hands and their noses tied round their necks, having been amputated by his soldiers. And what he did there set the pattern for the genocidal extermination of almost all the Native American peoples. A hundred million before Columbus made landfall. By the 19th century, that had come down to less than a million across the Americas. Overtly endorsed, by such revered figures as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, who wrote about the necessity of wiping out Native American peoples. In Britain, we present the colonial project as being about teaching the natives table manners and double entry bookkeeping. In India, the British manufactured a famine in the 1870s, out of nothing. There were food surpluses, massive amounts of food. But the governor, Lord Lytton, insisted that this food be exported wholesale to Britain. The ensuing starvation killed at least 12 million people, possibly as much as 29 million people. All relief works were banned except for hard labour in labour camps, where the inmates received the same rations as the inmates of Buchenwald and where there was a 94% death rate per year. This was all done in the name of liberal free market capitalism. Of course, the British did something similar in Ireland. In Kenya, soon after the Second World War, there was an uprising by the Kikuyu people who wanted their land back. The Kikuyu were herded into concentration camps and fortified villages, almost the entire population of over a million people. People were systematically tortured to death. They invented a new kind of pliers whose purpose was first to crush men's testicles and then to cut them off. They raped women with bayonets they raped men. Similarly, a favoured technique was to ram sand up the rectum with a stick. Sometimes they were rolled up in barbed wire and kicked around the compound until they bled to death. Some of the British soldiers boasted about this. This is within living memory. The colonial secretary lied about it. The papers documenting it were burnt. The impact of the rich and powerful nations has been so phenomenally murderous and destructive that it has been completely airbrushed from our national consciousness. In order to justify the land-grabbing colonial projects, you had to create an ideology. We, the Europeans or the Americans, have come to rescue the rest of the world from its depravity and backwardness. But in order to do that, you have to be able to demonstrate that the rest of the world is depraved and backward. From this, arose the racism that is still with us today. It was a necessary component of the colonial project. Some people might claim, well, okay, we broke a few eggs to make this omelette. It's as if all those human beings were 
eggs. But look at the omelette. Isn't it fantastic? Look, we've made this fantastic omelette. Forget about all that unpleasant stuff and let's just celebrate where we are. Where we are is a continuation of the project. We commodified people's land and people's labour and turned it into our property. We're also destroying the rest of the living world alongside it. We don't have to be like this. We are the same human beings as anybody else. We're all part of the same big human family. We just have to recognise that, accept that. And of course, within Western countries, there are plenty of brilliant people resisting colonisation, both internal colonisation within our own countries and external colonisation of other people's countries. These are the voices which must come to the fore. Those who emphasise altruism and kindness and generosity and empathy for others. Those who recognise that skin colour and any other difference of language, of religion, of background is completely irrelevant by comparison to what we share, which is our humanity. So as you can see, that was just um, a very few, just a minimum, a tip of the iceberg of the wickedness of the so-called white man Esau Edom, which is a big biblical nationality, Esau Edom. You know, no wonder the Most High Yahweh Shem Yao Shai, you know, refers to him as the border of wickedness. That's regarding the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. You know, he's called the border of wickedness and the Most High hates him forever. The Most High has, you know, an everlasting hatred towards this man because, you know, these people are really wicked, you know. There is nothing, you know, right in them. The spirit in them is not right, you know. And we know the true Israelites are actually the so-called Negroes, the Native Americans and the Latinos. And before I go further, you know, it was actually speaking of Christopher Colon, Christopher Columbus, whose real name is Christopher Colon. You know, it was written that he came to the Americas and he discovered the Americas, in which before he got there, you know, we had the Northern tribe, which is consisted of um, Issachar, Zebulon, Asher, Gad, um, Naphtali, and the rest, you know, they were already present there. So you have the story here in the book of um, in the book of Second Ezra chapter thirteen, right? Can this book of Second Ezra chapter thirteen? I would read from verse forty, which quotes: "Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osea the king, whom Salmanasa the king of Assyria led away captives." And he carried them over the water, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel against themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statues that they never kept in their own land, So actually, you know, they were carried away um, captives to, to, by the king of Assyria, you know. So they decided between themselves, you know, to flee elsewhere to another land where no one knows. So they can, you know, thereby go there and, you know, continue and, you know, observe the commandments which the Most High Yahweh Shem has given them, you know, in peace which they didn't do when they get when they got there you know they they they, they, they started following you know the different gods that they, they learned you know so here in verse 43 and they entered into euphrates by the narrow passage of the river for the most high then showed them signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over for through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Asaret, okay? And which in the normal Hebrew tongue is Asarat, which means another land. And that land is America. Now, in the book of um, Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 28, as the elder apostles have taught us to always, you know, break this thing down the right way. To 
to show that it is America. You see, and that word, you have it here. And the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai rooted them out of their land in hunger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. You know, this is, uh, this is a prophecy right from back, way back, you know, until this day, as you can see it, you know. And that's another land is that Azareth, which is America. Now, let's go to the root words. And cast them into another land. Another land, another is Asha, okay, which if you go. I don't know why it shows like this. I don't know why it shows like this. It's not even giving me. Anyway, let's hear. Let's do it this way. Another land. Let's see what it says here. Strong's H three twelve. Acher. Acher. Okay. Strong's H seven seventy six. Eretz. Eretz. Okay. So now, if you put the two words together, and you know that an ancient Hebrew tongue, you don't have the vowel e. Okay. So it tells you is Asher, and this H no, you have Asharat. You know which is what's written here, Azarat. Okay verse 45 so we know we don't have um the e which is asarat that's the land of america so anyway i just wanted to point that one out but then you know going back to the to the topic you know esau the so-called white man that's ruling this kingdom right now as a devil man he is wicked he is known as the border of wickedness and if we don't pray to the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahushai to quicken, you know, to hasten the time of the coming of His Son, then we're all going to be doomed. As you can see, He is manipulating and creating, uh, is creating a famine, you know, in which is being used by the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahushai to punish the whole people. You know, He is working in the laboratories, you know, working very hard to bring out new, new. How should I put it? I don't want to mention it so they don't take down my video. You know, new things that make you sick, you know. That's what he's been working about. He's been working about, you know, um, creating new beings that are half humans and half something else, animals, you know. He's been working and, you know, all your tax money has been using them to create all sorts of wicked things, you know, against you, you know. He's been is now he's given is giving out you know Vanessa juice that you know one of its main ingredients is the Hydra vulgaris, which you should go look up. You know, the elder apostle Taha did a lesson regarding it, you know. And this is actually going to destroy you, man. And it's going to prepare your body to collect the MOB. You know what the MOB is? The potato chips that's going to go into your body. Without that, you can't buy no sell, you know. This is the promises that this man has for you. You know, he's not, he has not changed. He's the same person, you know. There is nothing new under the sun, you know. We all come back to our lot. He's wicked. And you remember what the book of um, Sirach, the chapter 10 verse 12 or 12 verse 10. I think it's 10 verse 12. He quotes, you know, never trust thine enemies for as iron rusted, so is his wickedness, you know. This man is actually the wicked and he is being exposed, you know, everyone knows, you know, those who have their eyes open, only, only these goofy ass Christians, you know, are still, you know, trusting in him and believing he's the, he's the, he's, he's, he's the right, the good one, you know. Now, let's get the book of, let's get the book of Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, 
I'm going to read from verse 3 and it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed and the son of perdition. And that falling away has occurred in 70 AD. It actually started in 66 AD, you know, led by um, Titus, okay, led by his chief commander, um, Alexander Tiberius, who is a Jake, okay. And he says, Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You know, that man of sin is being revealed now, even more. He was already there back in those days, but you know, people weren't people were still so asleep. So Yahawashai actually came to open their eyes to let them know what what's the truth, you know. But in these days, you know, everyone knows that this so-called white man that's in power is the so-called devil, man. You know. All his decrees, all his laws, and everything has gone against the, the commandments of the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai, and he's pushing wickedness, you know. Now, if you read verse 4, it says, Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God? Yes, and he's been doing that, you know, through science, you know, through all different kinds of sorcery, you know, most especially by pushing himself as the most high you know putting replacing his image replacing the image of yahweh shai who is a so-called negro and putting the image of a tyrant in his place the image of chesare boja and these goofy ass christians are worshiping a tyrant man that's why it's written you know many are called but few are chosen you know and that way that's going to lead to destruction is a broad one and many are going to find it you know he says, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's what I just explained. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what with, withholded that it might be revealed in his time. Listen, it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already walk. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. You know? So, is the mystery of iniquity was already walked. That was through the Romans that were in, that were in power then. You know? And verse 8 it says, And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming you know so yahweh shai is going to destroy this man okay with the spirit of his mouth which is um which is the the so-called you know chariots you know through these chariots are going to come you know concentrated fire and you can also say through the spirit of his mouth we're already destroying him through the spirit of his mouth which is this truth that we're spreading you know it's a two-way scriptures you know so he knows that he has but a short time, you know. That's why he's, you know, he's trying his best to make you all, you know, get juiced up, get this juice walk and do all those things. But then Jake is stupid, man. Jake is sottish. Jake, Jake does not consider, you know. Jake now is trying to become whatever. He's trying to, you know, to, to, to buy a new car, get a new house and succeed in this kingdom, man. He really yeah, this is this is not a time to be doing all that shit, man. This is the time to be seeking the most I Yahba Shem Shai in truth and sincerity. So the video we, you just watched, you know, it's actually it's actually has been said that this man was going to do all this to us. Let's get the book of Joel 3. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 3, and it says, And they cast and they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. You know, this is exa exactly what they've they've done, and this is what they're still doing. You know, all these children that are going missing, where do you think they end up, man? They end up as baby sacrifice.
for Esau Edom. Esau Edom drinks their blood to get younger. You know, these are deeper things, man. But this man is the devil and is being revealed in all parts, man. That's why you really need to pray for the kingdom of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai should come as fast as possible. If not, we are all doomed. Just like the book of Matthew. Matthew 24. 22. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 22. And it says, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You know, and this is what we are actually praying for. And that's why this year is the year of hastening is coming, man. So the world is, is actually, you know, praying for things to get normal and things to get better. So they could go back to their careers and stuff, you know. While we are praying, you know, for things to get worse. So the son, the son of the Most High, Yahweh Shai, can come and redeem us from this place, man. Because if we keep going like this, we are all doomed. <laughs> if if the Most High opens our eyes to see exactly everything that Esau, Esau has in store for us. Man, I don't know what feeling will come upon you, man. Because this man is the harbinger of death, man. All he does, all his hand works, is all death. You know, he has nothing but death prepared for you. He has incriminated the water, the hair, the food, you know. He has genetically modified everything, man. This man is the wicked. And just wanted to point something out because, you know, amongst the so-called white people, we have the sons of Israel mixed amongst them you know because israel is spread around the four corners of the earth you know so esau there are actually some israelites that might look like the so-called white man but it's the spirit that tells if you're an israelite in the same way that there might be some you know so-called people that have dark skin that looks like jake but they are actually edomites you know so this is a great misery that the most i have Hashem shai you know, by the grace, you know, and by mercy, a heart for us through his son, Yahweh Shai has given to us to have this knowledge of these things, you know. This truth is to be craved more than any other thing, you know. So, yeah, I hope, you know, I sent a message today. I hope this mess lesson was edifying. You know, I just wanted to point out a few of the atrocities of so-called white man Esau Edom. And can let me just do something, you know. Let me go into the root word of atrocities. No, this is not what I want. Excuse me. So it says, look up. Let's look up. It says, act of barbarity, barbarity, an extremely wicked or cruel act, typically one involving physical violence or injury act of barbarity you know it says an extremely wicked or cruel act so esau is actually known as the wicked you know christopher esau columbus wicked, one of the great you know, european heroes he never turns up on the, the island of hispaniola he was welcomed by the native people now, they embraced them the they treated them the with fantastic hospitality his soldiers you know, snatched babies from the breasts of their mothers and, and that's what dashed their heads what against the rocks is, children you know, were fed alive becomes, to his dogs you know, his breasts were cut off kills, he decided to hang 13 of the native that's americans in hispaniola to recreate the crucifixion of jesus plus the apostles it's true that the majority of people died there of disease diseases introduced by the europeans unwittingly but many others were driven to death through overwork direct murder through starvation as their resources were taken away columbus insisted that everybody bring him a certain amount of gold 
and those who failed to do so had their hands cut off. Some were sent back to their villages with their hands and their noses tied round their necks, having been amputated by his soldiers. And what he did there set the pattern for the genocidal extermination of almost all the Native American people. A hundred million before Columbus made landfall by the 19th century that had come down to less than a million across the Americas. Overtly endorsed by such revered figures as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, who wrote about the necessity of wiping out Native American peoples.